We should strive to do things in his spirit, not to use violence in fighting for Hey, Composing Gloves here. I'm wearing a hat. This is like the fifth time I've recorded this video because I keep missing things. We're going to talk about psychoacoustic tuning. We're going to talk about, I realize I could edit stuff, but I just want to do it all in one big take. Psychoacoustic tunings. We're going to cover critical bandwidth. We're going to cover uh, distortions from your basal ear membrane. So if you haven't watched the previous videos in this series, go watch those. I'm also going to rely heavily on stuff from Sound Synth Basics, and I'm also going to rely heavily on some music theory knowledge when I get to the acoustic tunings, psychoacoustic tunings, which aren't, honestly, we're not going to go too far into that. I'm just going to give you some basic food for thought and then point you a bunch of really insane directions because tunings are like a whole, like there's like a whole series all on its own. So anyways, first let's talk about, we are in a position now to understand why we hear certain things. So let's start off with critical, uh, the critical bandwidth. So your basal ear membrane, as we talked about in previous videos, Liquid, the stapes hits the oval window, causing liquid to move inside the cochlea, causing the basal ear membrane to resonate, right? With certain, depending on the way the frequency components will cause different areas of the basal ear membrane to move. And that's why we have a, a frequency response. That's why, well, that's why we have a frequency response. It is, but that's critical bandwidth. That is why we have the range that we do have. So at the beginning of our basal ear membrane, it's smaller. It's got 20 hertz, I mean 20 kilohertz. The tiny hairs are attached to it for, through the organ of the corti, and it's a little more rigid. It gets bigger, and over here we've got like, you know, our low end, 20 hertz. It is less rigid, and it's got longer hair. So different parts of this will resonate depending on the frequency component causing the outer hair cells to deionize, sending messages to the brain that we have heard these things, and then your brain does all manner of insaneness to figure out what it is that we heard. So that stuff should not be new. That stuff should all be reviewed, which is why I blew through, blew through it so fast. What I'm interested in, I wanna, I wanna bring some more awareness. All this stuff is just bringing more and more awareness to the basic concepts. So you, what I just said was that the brazier membrane resonates depending on the frequency components. So my question is, oh, well, we have these outer hair cells. Is there like one outer hair cell for a frequency? And you're going to be like, no, it depends on where the breast ear membrane moved. And if that one moves, it's going to move those hair cells, even though they do have different lengths. So we can tell that there's some sort of a grouping going on here. So we're like, oh, okay, well, if that's the answer, then what happens if I have, if I play a chord? Let's just say I play a note. So on the piano from Sounds and Basics, you know, I hit a note. It's going to play me a fundamental frequency, the lowest tone, the lowest sinusoidal component, and then all the above sinusoidal components are actually uh, also perceived in your ear. So when we hit notes, we're sending in these rays of sinusoidal components. Now what happens if two components resonate the same, the same area of the base of your membrane, but they cause, um, they cause, what's the word I'm looking for? Like, let's say that we've got that now each, we've got two harmonic spectrums coming into our ear. We've got one that's maybe resonating at like 500. And this one's also resonating at 503. Which one do we hear? So we're going to talk about that one when we get to masking. There's one that's an acoustic problem. So a lot of these things, if you feel like you have to comment like, oh, this is why, I mean, you can, but we're going to talk about it when we get to masking. It's a, it's a topic that is so important in mixing that I'm, it needs to be a separate video. There might even be a couple of videos about it. I don't know. Probably just one though will do just fine. So that's the first one is we realize that a bunch of parts of our basal ear membrane are going off and what happens when two things are in one area. So that's critical bandwidth. Critical bandwidth is the band, the frequencies that a particular part of the basal ear membrane responds to. They act as filters naturally. So if you play white noise into your ear, you're going to hear certain each part of your base ear membrane will actually extract parts of that noise and interpret it now noise is really really interesting because it's random information at all frequencies so i mean if you want to get like technical white noise is uh equal energy per frequency randomly so and then pink noise is equal energy per octave randomly per frequency but it's equal energy per octave so it's it's really really interesting because how does your brain decide if you've got 501 and 500 and then think about it if you've got 501 and 502 well there's got to be a frequency that's 501.1 501.2 501 you have all these in between so how do you decide you know what you're hearing out of this infinite series and so that is what sort of the question is and 
uh, it has to do critical bandwidth, and masking will answer a lot of these things. Why does noise, you've been practicing listening to noise. Haven't you ever wondered why noise sounds that way? When you can take a piano with harmonics and get something so different. Then if you get something similar to that piano and then play them at different volumes, you're gonna get something even di more different. So different results. And so it's just really interesting. Now these are all the fault of your neurons, of not your neurons, of your inner hair cells. They can only fire off so fast. And the more firings there are, the louder the sound is. But you've got to realize that they can't fire off for 500 hertz and 501 hertz that fast. You can't even tell the difference if I played them sequentially because they're so close together that you just mentally, you just group them together. So uh, now I believe there's a separate, your brain can technically tell them apart, but psychoacoustically you can't. I'm but I might be wrong about that. So if anyone knows, let me know. It's kind of hard to delve in and find answers to some of these questions that I've run across as I've learned about this. But anyways, that's part of the problem. So that's critical bandwidth. The bandwidth of those frequencies that cause that part of the basilar membrane and those hair cells to activate. It's not a problem when you can, because you can have stuff coming on down here and stuff going on up here. High frequencies and low frequencies, that's fine. It's a different part of the membrane, different hair cells, different signals going to the... Um, Eighth cranial down in the eighth cranial membrane or whatever it's called. So that's that's what it's called. So, anyways, they go out. Now, the basilar membrane. Now, this brings up the interesting thing of natural distortion. So, what if? And it, we're gonna get into Fletcher Munson curves later. But what if I play a signal? Like, let's say I've got a one kilohertz tone, and I'm playing it. If I play it louder, will it activate more more outer hair cells? or inner hair cells, well, I guess outer hair cells would be moving around anyways, but will activate more of those, causing me to perceive it as louder than it actually is? The answer is yes. It's kind of this interesting deal as you turn it up. So this is distortion. Now there's, you suffer from inner modulation distortion and from harmonic distortion, just from the natural way your basilar membrane moves. So if something gets louder, it's gonna activate more of those neurons saying it's louder, but that can cause with where the filters cross over, because the different bandwidths are their bandwidth filters. So when they cross over, you're gonna run into these these pockets where they'll activate hair cells that don't typically activate for that frequency as you turn the volume up. So it's kind of an interesting deal. As you turn your volume knob up, it will sound more full. You'll get a frequencies that don't even exist in the original signal. You will perceive them mechanically. Not It's not the fault of, of the acoustics. It's not the fault of your brain in this case. It is simply the hair cells are moving that didn't used to move before physically. And so that's part of the distortion. So a lot of people don't know this, but when you turn stuff up and it sounds good, it evens out, well, you've got problems, bro, dude. It's actually distortion, but we're used to it. So that's the thing. Now, one thing that you should be aware of is the harmonic stuff aligns itself harmonically so it actually is pretty pleasing the intermodulation stuff is not but i'm not sure i'm going to go into that at all because it's not that big of a deal right now maybe i'll have a separate video for it as i get down later into more advanced concepts now let's talk about so we know what critical bandwidth is and we're beginning to see some of these really interesting things that it does and i really quick want to toss beating out there so beating is when you have like 500 hertz and 501 hertz and they sum for, as a result of the phasing, they phase each other because their phases are out of line. So they have different parts where they sum and you're going to get louder and softer. That's called beating. We'll talk about it. And that is purely acoustic. So I, I want you to know right now that's not a psychoacoustic phenomenon. That is a purely acoustic phenomenon. Now, there are other things that we're going to be talking about that are psychoacoustic phenomenon. But for now, that is purely acoustic. Get that out of your head that that's the fault of your ear. That is something that's going on with the signal in the air uh so one other thing okay so we talked about that now let's talk about psychoacoustic tunings which are also part of the whole what neurons fire off because of the critical bandwidth so the critical bands so at what point do you get to a new note? That's the question. And this is a this is a topic that is really, really deep. Um, <laughs> it could be like a whole series. I'm not even joking. If you go look up Pythagoras and his original tuning scales, he came up with a ratio. But basically from the ear, let's start there. If I play 100 hertz, well, we know that we have frequencies in between, like 101.1, but we're going to ignore those. Let's just say I go to 102 hertz. 
Is that a new note? And the answer is no. You won't even be able to tell the difference. Like, I'd be really surprised if you could honestly, like, through a blind test, actually tell me the differences between those. You got to be like, you got to have some weird disease or special ability or something like a superhero. Disease is kind of negative. Uh, so, because <laughs> it's a disease. So, what's interesting about that is, so, okay, what point does it become a new note? And now we run into this this really interesting thing. So, Pythagoras came up with these ratios, and now, of course, he was using, I believe he used string originally to come up with them, but there are loads and loads of tuning scales precisely because of this problem. And there are other scales, like the Western theory, which exists simply so that we have more options. Like, for example, we can modulate keys easily. We can go from C to G to A minor to F. Like, we can move around and we can use the same notes for the same things. That is not how it worked originally. Uh, in fact, now, this is MIDI music theory. If you want to go understand what I'm saying right now, you need to know that stuff because I'm not, it's just way too much to cover. This is more advanced. So, like, for example, you have an F sharp. Uh, this is, so we have, like, a note here, right? Like, let's say right here, we have C sharp, and then it is also considered D flat. Well, there used to be two separate keys for this precisely because of the weird toning thing I was just telling you about. The way you got to whatever that note was or the way you get to whatever that note is matters it matters a lot and so it's just really interesting then we have other problems like the logarithmic nature of uh, i'm not going to pull out oh, oh okay i'm on a different channel okay so let's pull out an eq2 my laptop has a much smaller effects bank so i get mixed up sometimes so look at this this is one octave right 20 hertz to 40 hertz and that's one octave so that's 20 hertz to express 12 tones in the Western scale. Look up here. We have 5K to freaking 10K. That's 5,000 hertz to express the same 12 notes. Like, that's insane. So we've got we've got an issue here, guy. So or girl, I don't know. And like that's 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 a thing. So we need to be aware of this. That these tuning scales are a result of our critical our critical bandwidth. And you'll notice that because of this, low frequencies will e more easily sound out of tune. In some cases, the, the frequency you're looking for, typically you're not gonna get out of a typical synthesizer that doesn't do in between frequencies. So, because arguably you could also say there's infinite in here, but then we get into this whole other discussion. So as you see, it's like this insane topic. Like, it just goes on forever. I have several videos outlining these concepts uh, in various places. But honestly, just look up the subject on your own. Look up tuning scales. There are videos on YouTube. Some of them are really well done. Other ones are like, okay. And then, yeah, you'll come across things and they'll give you more resources. And you can just go down this crazy line. But it is because of the critical bandwidth that this problem even exists in the first place. So that's where it starts. And that's like, once you get to that, you start asking scientific questions about like, why, why? Why does those hair cells fire off? at that moment in time why so there's so we've covered distortion we've covered the basier membrane and resonance we've covered psychoacoustic tunings uh, oh shoot was there anything else i wanted to cover basier membrane psychoacoustic tunings uh effects of the psychoacoustic tunings we've talked about masking i believe that is it psychoacoustic masking if you have any questions, let me know. Uh, I know this is quite a lot of information. Drop your comments down below on whatever, whatever you think, you know. Did you have a good day today? You know, if you did, comment a 10. If you had a bad day, comment a 2, I guess. Don't do a 1. It's like, only comment a 1 if you're, like, dead. But you're not dead. So there you go. But now I'm probably going to get a bunch of 1s from smart people who think they're being funny. I don't know. This is just serious stuff, man. Don't be commenting 1s in people's videos. Uh, <laughs> subscribe, support me on Patreon, and have a blessed day. Here it is.